After World War II, the US built dozens of air defense sites to protect the US mainland. Nearly every major US city was guarded in all directions, creating a shield to defend them from attack. However, by the 1960s, ICBMs, and then finally the ABM Treaty in 72, saw the decommissioning and removal of them. The Cold War later ended and there was no real need to defend the mainland, as there was no longer a serious adversary for the US. But that's no longer true. China has been upgrading their bomber fleet, complete with a new stealth bomber. They are building aircraft carriers that could conduct operations off the coast of the US. And they now have long-range cruise missiles, similar to Tomahawk, that could hit targets in the US. And finally, now they're working on and testing new hypersonic weapons that can reportedly orbit the Earth. So, is it time for the US to again think about defense? But first, our sponsor, Ground News. When I'm doing research for these videos, I can never believe just what the US is saying, or just Russia, or even China. I have to read them all, which becomes a ton of work. And that exact same thing is true with the news in general. That's where our sponsor, Ground News, comes in. They take and compare how any news story is being covered across the political spectrum. For example, here's one I found myself recently. The center tells you just the base facts. The left bias adds in emotional words like mourns and painful to make it sound like he really cares. And the right bias adds in that he went and played golf after to make it sound like he doesn't care at all. It's almost comical how they're all of the same story, yet give their readers completely opposite impressions of that story. I think everyone knows this kind of stuff happens, but to see it there side by side is just incredible. They also have other tools, like the bias distribution chart or the blind spot feed, which shows you stories that are being underreported or not reported at all by the other side. It's a really cool app. Check them out at ground.news slash covercabal and download the app. For the last few decades, the US has not had to worry about any serious threat to the US mainland from any other nation. Instead, they have focused nearly exclusively on offensive capabilities. Things like stealth fighters designed to penetrate an enemy's airspace and remain undetected, new long-range cruise missiles like JASM, new tankers, glide bombs, aircraft carriers, ballistic missiles, drones, and many more, all of which can be considered as more offensive weapons. There's been very little focus on defense, whereas other countries, like Russia for example, have focused greatly on defensive weapons. Things like shore-based, anti-ship missiles to defend against enemy ships coming to attack your country, like Ball or Bastion P, or surface-to-air weapons to shoot down enemy aircraft flying into your territory, like the S-400 and Pantsir. As mentioned, the reason the US hasn't built up any defenses is that they really have no need to. The US is half a world away from any potential enemy, like Russia or China. And, up until recently, no other country in the world has had long-range land attack cruise missiles and ships or submarines to carry them to within striking distance of the US mainland. So, no need for anti-ship missiles to try to stop them or air defense systems to try to shoot them down. But Russia has since developed things like the Caliber cruise missile and deployed it on many of their warships. And China has been working on larger and larger aircraft carriers and warships armed with their own cruise missiles that will be able to project their power all the way up to the US doorstep. And cruise missile technology in general has proliferated to the point where even countries like North Korea, Iran, and many others now operate them. Currently, the US is already beginning to think about these different types of defensive weapons. Not necessarily to defend the US mainland, but to defend overseas military bases. The proliferation of extremely accurate crews and ballistic missiles, larger and more powerful warships, and more capable fighter and attack aircraft means that the US needs a new way to defend their bases. The Iranian strike on US bases in Iraq in 2020 really highlighted the vulnerability of them and shows the need for new defenses. For example, to defend against aerial threats, the US has bought two Israeli Iron Dome batteries, also, they've been looking at adapting the naval SM-6 missile for land use by the Army. Along with these are several direct energy air defense systems to stop drones, rockets, artillery, and cruise missiles. And they have just now began building land-based anti-ship missiles using the naval strike missile. These are all systems that could be easily deployed in the US in the future if needed. And the other reason will be to defend against hypersonic nuclear threats. Going back to the early days of the Cold War, the reason the US set up dozens of Nike surface-to-air missiles across the US was to shoot down incoming Soviet bombers. 
Back then, the only way to carry out a nuclear strike was by sending bombers over to the enemy's territory and dropping bombs. These slow-flying bombers could easily be shot down, so each side built hundreds and hundreds of them in the hopes that at least a few would survive and be able to carry out their mission. So back then it made sense to deploy surface-to-air missiles to try to stop them. Later in the 60s, with the delivery method of nuclear weapons switching more to ICBMs, these air defenses were no longer useful. ICBMs fly way too high and way too fast. This was the beginning of the idea of mutually assured destruction. There was no longer any way either the US or Soviet Union could possibly stop the other's nuclear attack, so defenses really weren't needed anymore. However, one vital element for mutually assured destruction to work is that you are able to launch your own weapons before they get destroyed on the ground. ICBMs fly a very predictable path. The target they're going after can be calculated pretty accurately very quickly after they launch. This, first, allows you to know it's coming at you, so you need to act, and second, it gives you some time to react. Not much, but a good 15 to 30 minutes. China's new hypersonic glide vehicle that reportedly orbited the Earth before coming down and impacting really changes things. First, its ability to glide and maneuver means that you might not necessarily know it's coming at you and not somebody else. And second, its ability to go into orbit means that it could come back down and hit you nearly any time. Could be in one hour, could be in one day, could be in a week. And it could potentially be from a direction that you can't see. For example, US early warning radars are directed to the north, west, and east. There is a gap in the south, as, in the past, there hasn't been any threat of a nuclear attack in that direction. If an enemy can strike you before you have the chance to retaliate, a nuclear war could potentially become winnable again. A quick decapitation strike on the US leadership, along with hitting missile silos and bomber bases, could stop the US from being able to strike back. And if a country doesn't have to worry about the consequences of being attacked in retaliation, it really lowers the bar and increases the possibility of a nuclear war occurring. At that point, there's two things you could do. You could create better methods of ensuring your ability to retaliate despite such a decapitation strike. For example, really making sure your ballistic missile submarines are able to remain hidden and can survive to launch a retaliatory strike. You have to make sure that they are not being tracked, or have had their patrol routes revealed through things like cyber espionage. Or the other option is to build up defenses against it. You'd have to develop a way to stop a large-scale missile attack. The US has built one called GMD. It does have the ability to shoot down ICBMs, however, it is extremely expensive, meaning you cannot possibly build them in large enough numbers. Likely, the only realistic option is with direct energy weapons. Developing them, manufacturing, and deploying them would be expensive, but after that their cost is just basically electricity, or chemicals, depending on the type. These could either be deployed in space, where the atmosphere is thinner, giving them longer ranges, or large, much more powerful ground-based ones to get the range necessary, like the Miracle Laser, for example. However, this itself is also destabilizing to that idea of mutually assured destruction. Being able to completely stop a nuclear attack on you also means there are no consequences, therefore, again, increasing the chances of a nuclear war. So, it's a fine line. For the last 50 years, the US has been safe from the threat of nuclear war through that concept of deterrence and mutually assured destruction. But it's possible that that might finally be coming to an end. Maybe the answer lies in what Russia's been doing. That is building unique methods of delivering nuclear warheads through things like nuclear-powered torpedoes. Things like these could hopefully keep deterrence alive and really cut back on the possibilities of ever having a nuclear war.